Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome aboard AMP Employability and Soft Skill Program Day 3. AMP thanks Reed Academy and Swift eLearning Services for their help and support to execute this 15 day soft skill program to benefit everyone. As we all know, that trainings like these are very expensive, and this training is initiated by AMP for free to everyone. A small attempt of AMP to help upgrade your skills during these times of pandemic. I'm sure by now many people who have joined the live session, they know about AMP. If someone here does not know about AMP, uh, there's a brief intro that I would like to take you through. Uh, AMP is registered in India and United States of America as a nonprofit organization. And AMP has completed 12 years serving community in the field of education, employment, and empowerment. We have a vision to positively impact lives of 10 million people by 2030. AMP's mission is to empower Muslims for the greater benefit of the society in general and nation as a whole. Our vision is to be a model Muslim community which is advanced in education, socially progressive, culturally vibrant, politically influential, and economically dynamic. What AMP has achieved in the past 12 years is right in front of you. I just want you to go through this slide and we'll move on to the next slide. AMP's reach on ground presence right in front of you, 100 plus active chapters across India, present in 19 states within India and 16 countries have got active volunteers, 5,000 plus active members. Online presence is 125,000 members and professionals connected through Instagram, Facebook, Google, WhatsApp, LinkedIn. If you wish to join AMP, you can always log on to www.ampindia.org forward slash join AMP. And we would be glad to have you on board with us. So uh, I would like to introduce you to uh, the speaker of our day. I'd like to introduce Mr. Shah Siddiqui, who is the CEO of Reed Academy, who will be taking a live session today. We also have Mr. Saeed, who is the Director of Technology at Soft eLearning Services, who is looking after the LMS. So, uh, uh, Shen do we have to ask uh, uh, Saeed yes. to take us through for a minute? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Said Bhai, uh, just let us know. Uh, looks like some users are facing issue while connecting to the system. So if you can please explain. Yeah. Hello and uh, a very warm good evening to everyone. So I've been uh, seeing that, you know, there is a lot of the queries that are coming up with respect to the logins of the LMS. And uh, uh, so I just wanted to let you know that, you know, we have sent in, uh, emails to everyone. So, uh, you know, you can just click on the email that was sent to you. There, there is a link out there, ampskills.swifthcm.com. So just click on that link and then it will prompt for a username and a password. So just, you know, type in the username and password or just copy the username and password what is given in the email. So you might be, you know, uh, making some mistakes uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, typing in the password. So that is where, you know, most of the users might be having some issues. So just copy and paste the password and you should be able to log in. So that's, you know, one thing. And I see that, uh, you know, we were looking at the analysis and out of 313 users, 97 have just, you know, enrolled into the course till now. So please remember that, you know, you won't be getting the certificate until you complete, you finish off, you know, you enroll and then complete the assessment. So 210 users are still yet to take the uh, course. So please make sure that, you know, today itself you log in into the LMS and then you enroll and then you just, uh, you know, type in the username and password. For those of you who did not get the email uh, till now, so in the chat box, I'll be pasting one link, a sign up link. So please feel free to, you know, just give your first name, last name, email and a password of your choice. And then you will have access to all the courses. Yeah. So at the end of the course, I mean, at the end of the webinar again, so again, I'll talk for a minute or two based on the queries that we get. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Saeed. And uh, you can keep monitoring the chat section. I think there are a lot of people who are raising queries in reference to uh, LMS. I request Mr. Shah Siddiqui to uh, take over from here now and he can start his session. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, and welcome back all the attendees. I hope you can uh, you know, see me as well as hear me well, and also uh, the screen that I'm sharing. Uh, everything is uh, good, we will just move on. As you can see, we have a very, uh, uh, two small topics left over in uh, time, after which we will get on, start with stress. 
So, uh, you know, if you have any questions, uh, as ever, I will give you some time in between. And then last night, uh, last evening, you had some questions uh, sent as a message, which I was able to respond back uh, within the Q&A session. And so hopefully that would uh, have sufficed and um, answered your questions. And uh, do so continue doing it on the chat box and I will get to it when I get to it. And once again, we will have at least a 15 to 20 minutes Q&A session uh, towards the end of this module. And uh, we plan to end uh, uh, stress management tomorrow, after which we will be starting emotional intelligence because uh, there were some queries about as to when the uh, EI module will begin. So it would start week after, uh, next week, uh, starting uh, Sunday, I believe. So uh, let's get over with time. And uh, we're going a bit slow on time because this is a, a basic foundation. It covers most topics that you will be touching bases again in the future. And then this would be the beginning of your journey into time. So, you know, let's get back and finish up time and uh, begin with a, a little bit of catch up from yesterday. So, um, you know, we've done, um, you know, two major topics yesterday, procrastination and planning. And procrastination is what uh, your future, um, you know, levels of performance and productivity will be based on. Because you have to develop the lifelong habit of tackling with the most important task that you have first thing in the morning and without even thinking about it. So we've used the example of eat the frog or eat that frog or eat the toughest uh, frog that you have. And then when you know that you have to eat the frog, there's no point in looking at the frog because you would only get bored. And lastly, when you know that the frog is the most uh, toughest part of your day, then you would have the satisfaction of getting over with it by just completing the task. So basically the, your ability to uh, delay or avoid procrastination or your ability to delay the task will get you, you know, in trouble. For which we have these time management toolkit, the toolbox that we have given you, where procrastination uh, you know, takes um, precedence. And we have run into a few PCs and whatnot that we will continue, try to keep that in mind. You know, uh, If you have those things popping up in your mind and at work, you will immediately realize what CBT stands for, what the pre-P's and what the SMART goals are and how specific are, uh, um, or how specific or uh, relevant these are to your personal goals. So with that, we move on to a very simple uh, topic, meeting management. This is, uh, you know, um, often seen as, you know, the boring or the management evil in a business. And that is why meetings are made more uh, fun these days. You know, a new uh, concept has been to have meetings taken over into outdoor settings, taken over into, you know, areas like resorts and uh, since, when Las Vegas became the center for having all these corporate, you know, annual meetings uh, on the corporate side. So with that, let's move on, take a look at what uh, meetings are. As you can see on the screen, there's a nice quote here saying that history is written by people who attend meetings. And it's true. It seems that the senior management or the executives are spending half of the day in the meetings. Okay. And then there are different ways of cutting it short. There are different ways of making it, you know, uh, more productive and there are different ways of, you know, having it in a fun way. Uh, I was used to one meeting called the stand up meeting where we used to have it every day in the morning at 7 a.m. You know, we would stand up and meet for like 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes max and then move on. I found this concept, uh, you know, very, um, you know, efficient and productive. So um, meetings are often seen as, um, you know, a necessary evil of the office because they lack the purpose and the structure. You know, if you can just go to a meeting without being prepared, without taking the, your journal or your agenda, then chances are you would be wasting everybody's time. So let's look at what else we have, you know, in the meeting and then how a meeting can have a consensus. Um, there are different marketing areas or there are different marketing gurus who have come up with solutions to meetings. One, um, one, um, leadership uh, strategy to have a meeting conclude was to make sure that everyone was in consensus. So there are participants, there are observers, there are people who are conduct the meeting, there are, uh, you know, obstructions, there are, uh, what do you call it? Um, yeah, there are bugs here and there in the meeting, which you would have to, you know, streamline. 
which means that you have to make sure that you don't get carried away when you have a meeting. And there was one uh, important, um, um, you know, uh, concept of meeting that I want to quote. This was actually observed by Barack Obama, you know, in his early days. You know, whenever he held a meeting in his business side as a legal, um, you know, guy or as the president, he always made sure that everyone, you know, left the meeting in consensus, which means that if there was a single individual in the meeting who did not agree to the plan, who did not agree to the agenda, then the meeting would not conclude until he was okay or until he met halfway in between, you know, the the person conducting the meeting and the observer. So there are different rules and tricks to having a successful meeting. But in my opinion, the best part would be when everyone leaves the meeting in consensus. Now there is not a single individual, especially when it's a, you know, a senior, uh, you know, short uh, team related, you know, uh, employee meeting to make sure that everyone leaves the meeting in accordance with the agenda. There is not a single person who would leave the meeting not being happy or not in, um, not in agreement with the agenda. So this would be the best part. So first of all, you would have to make sure that meeting that you plan to do is an important aspect. If it is, we will use a new approach known as the PAT approach, which is P-A-T, P stands for purpose, agenda, and the time. Now I have some activities in there, but once again, I would have to not, um, you know, uh, skip these activities because these might be in your assessment uh, uh, package that you can try. For most of these activities, I want you all to give it a shot. Try it with your friends, with your colleagues, or if you're, if you know among yourself the attendees, then you can definitely try it. Okay, so you would have to look at you know a scenario where you would have a meeting on a regular basis like a weekly basis or bi-weekly basis and at the same time you know you would come up with the agenda and how you know you can plan on something you know it could be a dummy agenda okay take a look at what the purpose is and the time frame and then make sure that the the elements of meeting are all met are all satisfied the participants are all satisfied the participants are all in agreement you know and the participants are in contention so these are some uh, activities that you can try. In every module that I talk about, there are many activities. And if you look at uh, the student manuals that we will be posting, you will run into a lot of activities that at least you can try out somebody. In a live interactive workshop, this is what, this is what we do. Okay, so when it comes to meeting, we have the PAT agenda where you have to make sure you have a purpose. Okay, you have it written down and the deadline. Here's an example of how would you build on an agenda. Take a look at it with the time, okay? So the meeting here starts at 2.05, ends at 2.55. That's still a long meeting, okay? But it all depends on the agenda and what you plan to do. There's a saying, let's not get carried away. Okay, now this applies mostly to the meetings, okay, because we sit and then there is always a small talk, especially relating to the corporate culture. There are there is there has always been a culture of starting the meeting with a small talk, and you start out with them with the weather, especially you know in the West where weather is you know on everybody's mind. It's changing weather all day, every day, you know, within the day. So with the with the small talk, chances are you would get carried away. So you have to keep the things on the track, stick to the agenda, okay? Agree to an agreement or end on an agreement, follow up on missed items. So if you are more into meeting management or if you're more into conducting meetings or if you're more into attending meetings, then there might be an area for you to build on it. There are very interesting uh, topics and um, uh, books on, on very high level meetings that you can build on, okay? So you would have to actually know how to keep think tanks on and wrap up the meeting. That's very important. Making sure the meeting was worthwhile. You know, you have to summarize the meeting and the best part would be to post the minutes of the meeting. This is usually done, you know, by a person who writes the minutes, okay? But it would be a very good idea for every attendee to write the minutes. Remember, we have a, a writing journal that we are, um, you know, we, we have been recommended to use or we have been building to keep on. And time management is all about creating those lifelong habits, creating and changing your behavior and having yourself go into the chain of reading and writing. So your writing agenda 
you know, is very important here in the meeting, whether you are the writer or not, whether you take note of the minutes or not, it's better to always have uh, the minutes written down. Although there is one person who would be posting the minute and very critical meetings, uh, you know, critical in the sense, very uh, mission critical, very uh, sensitive meeting relating to legal, um, you know, um, concerns relating to legal happenings have to be written down and has to be posted right away. It has been a practice which I learned from a very senior management guy that I have worked with to always write it down after the meeting and write an email or send the message immediately. Okay. So that this has been um, the way so that you don't miss out on anything. Okay. And I have seen very uh, senior people, you know, in meeting, not even talk, not even listen, but keep writing. Because for some reason they need to record it. And then that's how they will work on it in the future. So uh, the meeting has to be productive. This has to be wrapped up in a timely manner and it would have to make sense. Okay. Otherwise it becomes a necessary evil of the organization. Uh, this video would summarize it. Gemma was a chairperson for her meeting. When she looked at the clock, it was 9.20 a.m. They were close to running out of the allotted time for the meeting. She addressed the attendees. While this is a great discussion about suggestive selling, we are about to run over our time for this agenda item. Should we end the discussion and move on, or should we continue with the discussion and reduce time for other items? We can also schedule an offline follow-up session. It was agreed that they would continue the discussion for five more minutes and reduce the time spent on another topic. This empowered the participants and also kept the meeting on track. All right. So that was a, a quick, uh, you know, uh, summary version. And uh, I'm going to skip these questionnaires. These are in your um, assessment um, package that you will have to work it out. Uh, but be sure to read the reference manual given to you, the book, or anything that we have in the future before you take the test. All right. Uh, this is the last topic of the day of the, of the time management module. Alternative meetings. Okay, now this was written down a, a while ago. If I were to give this uh, workshop 10 years ago, it would probably make more sense because this meeting is being conducted, you know, uh, not face to face, okay? And then this was actually, uh, a, a, you know, a plan, you know, to incorporate, you know, virtual meetings, okay? But you still have to stick to the agenda. You, stick, you still have to uh, keep in mind your PAT approach. And it's sometimes more challenging, you know, offline because, of the missing aspects of uh, the meeting, like your body language, your thought process, you know, and whatnot. So alternative meetings are once again, you know, the ones that we do, the one that we're doing right now, in fact, Zoom and uh, uh, Microsoft Teams have taken over the lead and you can't beat that. And back then instant messaging and chat rooms were, you know, a novelty, okay, that's when it was written. Okay, but there are rules that you have to stick to. If you are in a chat room, obviously there are some, you know, rules complying to the nature of the meeting. There are some rules complying to the, you know, nature of the web meeting that we're having. And there are rules pertaining to everything. Uh, these are once again, old topics. Teleconferencing is exactly what we're doing. In fact, when I was uh, doing time in the past, I never thought that I would be having, you know, a non-interactive, you know, a web-based teleconferencing this way. Because it's a bit uh, different because we stress on interaction, we stress on many other things that are not possible here. Obviously, you know, time is of essence, so it's very difficult. But I'm sure you're getting the most of it. And then the essence of the soft skills is to read and to write, and of which you can do it in your free time. There's no restriction to it. All right, so we're sharing screen. We have an interactive whiteboard, you can call it. It's being recorded. I think we have an excellent IT team here and the LMS that you have is state of the art and I have seen it, it has been developed specially for you. So there's been a lot of uh, efforts put into the LMS. So I'm sure you're enjoying it, you know, as you use it, as you move on. So more than half of your work is on the LMS. And then here, I wouldn't worry too much about the slides because you know, what I'm saying is more important than the slides and these are not a part of the slide, but of course you'll have reference to whatever I'm saying in the books that's been prescribed to you. All right. So email lists and online group. You know, in the past we had list serves and then databases holding on to you know the uh, email lists going out and um, um, bulk email. Okay, and then we always had a moderator and had a purpose. 
So the same thing would apply, you know, on email. You, you can be managing time, trying to do as many things as possible and not just many things, but most important things by exploring different online versions, different online groups. If you were to build on time management, a certain area, find a group, online group that stands up. Chances are there is everybody, every kind of group on every similar topic that you need that you can build on. But once again, you know, time management is not just about, you know, doing things online or doing many things, but it's about doing the most important things, you know, within a time frame. Uh, collaborative applications, uh, SharePoint, Skype, right, collaborate. These are probably old. I, you can tell that these are, you know, information from the past because it doesn't talk about what we're using, neither Zoom nor the Microsoft Teams, uh, not, uh, nor some other, uh, you know, recent apps that we have. Uh, Vivian was summary. discussing a dilemma with her supervisor, Paul. Vivian explained, I wanted to talk to you because I'm not sure what the best option is for holding a meeting with the attendees at different worksite locations. Paul said, have you thought about using a chat room or instant messaging application? But well, won't that make it impossible to stick to an agenda? Vivian replied, it will make it more difficult, but not impossible. Let's work on a plan for how you can keep your meeting on track using a chat room or instant messaging application, Paul explained. Coming up with a plan took only a short period of time. Vivian would have an agenda and make sure to stick to it. All right. Uh, lastly, post uh, meeting follow-ups, I think have been very, very effective on WhatsApp or any other messaging um, application that you have. I'm sure you would agree to it. You know, all the high level meetings are obviously now down to WhatsApp. So it's not just for, um, you know, social communication, but it's also being very productive. And then uh, lastly, uh, mind you, every email I have said has to be strategic. We will build on this as we move on. That includes every message on WhatsApp would have to be strategic. And then uh, what's strategic is what I talked about in the past, but we will be, you will be getting it as we move on, what I hear, what I mean here by strategy. So that completes our um, last uh, topic in time management. And I'm just gonna, you know, um, channel you through the next topic, you know, summarizing what we have studied. And then here we all started about uh, how to be a planner and we ran into many, many acronyms and a sequence of uh, topics that are interconnected. You know, somehow you need to develop a chain of command or a thought where you would link each topic to every topic, okay? And then the focus should be on procrastination and the focus should be on how to delegate work. And then you would develop the lifelong habit of tackling with the most important tasks the first thing in the morning. Yeah. The habit of uh, setting priorities, you know, overcoming procrastinations, you know, and taking care of mental and physical skills. Remember the bed that you are on, the foundation that you're on is based on personal motives, okay? It's based on delegation organizational tools and also crises that you run into. So uh, you, uh, when I talk about, uh, you know, uh, personal motives, I'm relating to your cognitive abilities, your mind, your brain, how it works. Subconsciously, you should be in a position to work out things, okay? And then there is a reason why I talk about subconscious, you know, how you would plan prior set up a ritual for recurring aspects of your daily routines. And this will help you subconsciously gain that productivity. So when your mind is at sleep, you know, your brain's working. This is what I mean. Now, this is very important for you all to know because this connects us to the next topic. When you complete a task, what happens? You uh, have the satisfaction of, you know, clearing it off your list, okay? And this satisfaction is addictive, okay? this high spirits you are in is addictive. And this is addictive for a reason because of some chemical reactions or physiologically you are, you know, going through a phenomenal, you know, change in your mind. And these are nothing but the hormones that are released. Now, everything that we do here, you all agree that this is, you know, some physiological reaction that's going on in your brain, the highs, you know, the blood pressure, you know, the energy levels that you get that boost you, regardless of how you do it, through caffeine or through sleep. 
Now, these are all the back end of your uh, tool management um, kit that's being um, that's being you know that's coming into action. So I want you all to develop this habit and also get an addiction to this lifelong habit of gaining the satisfaction. Now this addiction is not relating to your uh, satisfaction, but this addiction is relating to the hormone that has been released. For example, um, endorphins are released in your brain that give you a high, that makes you feel better. Now, if you are addicted to this hormone or the release of these hormones, you are actually being addicted to having a clear mind, okay, having the confidence and also having the competence that you need. So with this addiction, which is a positive addiction, I want you all to be able to like how you would continually go on subconsciously completing the mind, you know, completing the work and then, you know, being ready for the next time. So in the front end, we have all these things at the back end, it is the addiction that you need to have with your physical stuff. Okay. And one of the physical stuff that I'm talking, that I'm going to be talking about now is, um, you know, another, um, hormone that's known as adrenaline. And for those of you who are familiar, adrenaline is connected to stress. So when you are, you know, having a high blood pressure or having, you know, uh, panicky attacks or when you're having uh, pain, fatigue, then it's actually nothing but you're going through, you know, mild to moderate stress levels. This is due to the secretion of specific um, hormones in your mind. We don't have to worry much about the hormones. Let the doctors, uh, you know, worry about it because there is a medication for that. But right now, you know, we're trying to see how soft skills will enable you manage stress at a very, very uh, minor, um, you know, uh, relating uh, stressful or minor stress relating to your workplace to a very, very high level of stress, which will result in a breakdown. All right. So this is our uh, connection with the next topic of time management known as stress management. I'm gonna be sharing the screen in a second and uh, we will continue with that. All right, I hope everyone is, uh, you know, once again, uh, clear on what we did or have an idea about what we did. And if you have a question or two before I get into stress, you would have to, uh, you can ask me now or later or maybe a small pop-ups because we're gonna be starting another not so lengthy topic, stress, but we should be able to finish it between today and tomorrow. All right, so uh, as I have introduced you to time management known as holistic time management, the, t the tool that you were you know, introduced to was time management tool, but I want you all, you know, based on my earlier, um, you know, uh, presentation and my earlier uh, concept of how you would look at the soft skills, I would call it holistic time management because we have to look at it in the area, in a, in a, in a fashion, in a macro aspect, which means that you have to look at it in a whole manner, okay? Not just the bits and bits and how these little topics that you will learn, how these little topics that you have you know, learn to adapt, will interact with each other, okay? That would be holistic time management. That is include tools, that includes exercises, that includes a lot of other things, you know, depending on how much time we have, we'll, you know, we'll try to cover those. So let's Sir, get started. Yes. Sorry for interruption. Looks like the screen is freezed. If you'd like to unshare and share back. Uh, okay. Yeah, it is, it is fine. Can you see now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Were you, were you guys hearing me all the time? Oh, uh, yes. yes. Okay. The voice is clear, but the screen was frozen. I'm sorry. I didn't know when it got frozen. All right. So Seth seems to be a very, very interesting topic for most of you. From what I see, I don't think we have any stresses. And generally speaking, you know, I have seen uh, less stressful or the lifestyle, you know, less stressful as compared to the other countries, okay? Because we have the major, major stress observers, okay? Shock observers in our community, in the Indian community that I'm referring to and in the Indian subcontinent or in the Asian, um, you know, continent, you know, the stress levels are relatively 
lower. So it's a good news, it's a good sign. But we'll also try to understand how and why, you know, this is, you know, different. So <clears throat> I welcome you all to the stress management workshop. And then here we will talk about the levels of stress that we go through, you know, how stress is created, how to handle stress, okay, and the types of stress. And once again, many approaches, you know, to handling stress management. And one of the areas of this module is also physical exercises or physical activities that I have prescribed, you know, that, we, that I'm used to doing it in the live workshops, okay? Because it actually helps. And I'll try to give you one activity towards the end of this session so, so you all can see, you know, how it would help. So I'm sure most of you are physical, okay? Or at least trying to get physical, especially in this, uh, you know, era. And there is one stress that can be, um, that can be uh, as a result of the current crisis that we are going on. But I'm sure we all know how to handle stress and every stress level can be handled. Okay, it can be handled with our tools that we have. And uh, as, it, as you move on, there are other ways of handling it through medication. Okay, so here we will start out with two types of stresses. One is a positive stress and the other one is a negative stress. Okay, and the positive stress will, you know, be impacted based on your, would be brought into action based on your, um, based on your, um, um, you know, inclination towards, you know, reducing the negativity or towards the, the aspect of uh, lifestyle that you have based on the aspect of uh, your routines how you bring into the picture. And, um, you know, same way negative stress will be coming in as a result of your routines, as a result of your practices, and as a result of your day-to-day uh, -day life that you are used to. So the change is what we would like to talk about. You know, we would like to stress on it. And uh, there are some, um, um, to begin with, you know, when, before we get to the model, there is some pre-assessment um, uh, pre, uh, uh, or pre-stress um, uh, questionnaire that I have. Um, I wish uh, I had it because I wanted to make sure you write it down and uh, get to it. Uh, just give me one second, let me get it. It's highly recommended that you all uh, take the pre-assessment um, and then compare it with the post, especially when it comes to the activities that I plan to prescribe. And uh, this is uh, in your uh, this is in your um, assessment. But if you all can hear me well, I want you to on your. Uh, on your writing journal, answer these questions. On a scale of one to 10, rate your current stress level, okay? If you feel that you are stressed out or if you feel that you have stress, you know, please write it down here. And I want you all to go back and compare once we complete the topic. And then the next question would be, where would you like your stress levels to be, okay? I don't know if this is posted. I, I want you to write it down here and we'll go back and uh, compare it with what we do uh, throughout, okay? Your major stresses in life, for those of you who feel that you are stressed out, I would like you all to write down what your major stresses are. And towards the end of this module, we would at least look at how we would, if not mitigate these, but also compare it and see if it really makes sense. Because you may write that your biggest stressor now is your project, okay? But towards the end, you may say that, well, you know, it's something that I can handle, okay? So relating to the stress, what are the major challenges? Uh, question number four is, what are the major challenges that you have right now? So write down, you know, whatever your major challenges are, at least one, okay? And lastly, I would like to know, question number five, what are you doing to handle your stress? Is there anything that you're doing now? Is there anything that you intend to do, okay? Is there anything that you know that can handle you and uh, relieve you of the stress? So these are the pre, and I'm, I'm thinking, you know, that you can, uh, I'm thinking this is important for you to write it down so we can look at it at the back. So keep it clear, you know, with your answer. If you need a minute or so, please take it. Remember, we are on a scale of zero to 10, okay? Here, 
no stress or minimum stress. Here we have moderate stress. Here we are at the verge of a nervous breakdown. So don't think that this is not going to impact. You could break down, okay? And there is a, you know, a syndrome that we will talk about it. Now, also don't think that stress is fatigue, pain, headache, or blood pressure. It could be anything, okay? It could be a stress. Stress could take any shape, okay? You would fall sick and you would not know how, you know, that this was due to stress. So this is something to be taken seriously. All right, so if you're done with that, let's move on. Uh, these are the objectives, take a look at it. All right, so here we're gonna focus mostly on your lifestyle, okay? So I'm gonna be talking a lot about your lifestyle, you know, our lifestyle, how to improve your lifestyle. So it has a lot to do, you know, with physical stuff, not just reading, but a lot to do with your physical stuff. And not just reading and understanding tools, but a lot to do with your diet, okay? It's very important. And then as much as I say that the stress levels are lower among the corporate employees in the South Asian uh, sector, I'm gonna say that, you know, worse are the eating habits in our area, okay? I'm sure you all agree to it. And it took a long time for me to understand, you know, how we don't load up ourselves with veggies, you know, and how we have, you know, deep fried stuff okay and how we have you know dough you know bread and you know everything that we think is healthy is actually not okay and everything that needs to be on our table is not so we're going to be stressing on a good part of our lifestyle to approach stress of course we'll look at how to reduce stress and coping techniques and as you all know from this this is an individual thing whatever works for you is works for you so whatever works best is what you do Okay, I'm sorry, here are the pre-assignment reviews. So if you, ha if you have missed it from what I said verbally, uh, write it down, write down the answers to this. Say one, two, three, four. Uh, you can start out brainstorming ideas, uh, phrases, feelings, whatever uh, you feel better. All right, we're gonna move on to our uh, next topic, which is understanding stress. So uh, for those of you who had no idea, or if you're just so, uh, you know, keeping well, and you have no idea what stress is, then this is a chance for you to understand what stress is and how you would handle negative and positive stress. And then we will take a look at our first approach, which is known as um, the triple A approach, where you would have to see how you can alter, you know, and how you can um, adopt. Uh, so here's a slide on what is stress. So this is, you know, personalized, this is how everyone will look at it. Okay, so whatever works for you is, you know, is the best for you. So you cannot relate it to your stress levels versus somebody else. And then um, when I talk about individual meanings, what it means is the changes that you're going through. If you wanna define stress, many different definitions. One would be our adaptation to the change or how your body adapts to a change. When you see something drastically different and you need to adapt, then that's where stress comes into the play or that's where you start being stressed out. So this would be the best definition where how change is so constant these days and how you would have to adapt to these changes. Small change, big change, yeah. minor change, change into change. But whenever you see a change that doesn't you know, go well with your physiology, with your physical um, nature, then that's where the stress will start coming. Will uh, be, and then will be, uh, will have to be altered or would have to be mitigated. All right, the new term is zero stress, which is a good stress, a positive stress, okay? Uh, examples of positive stress is winning a roller coaster. Sometimes you cry, you know, because you're so happy. You know, they, 
said, it's, you know, the tears for being happy. So the type of stress that you would like to have is when you win a race, even better would be winning a lottery, okay? Or when you're watching, you know, fiction. Now, why would uh, fiction be a positive stress? Because you know it's gonna end. It's not for real, okay? But there are instances where, you know, watching a really, really scary movie would um, also result in a real fatigue, okay? Could result in a real emergency. However, uh, one way to gauge yourself is by watching a scary movie. The more uh, or the scarier the movie is and the different level of stress that comes in. But if you're able to handle a scary movie, then you're able to handle, you know, stress in a better way. That's one way. But, so Euro is a positive stress, okay? And here's our introduction to the AAA approach, okay? So we had peace and now we have AAA, alter, avoid, accept. Can you alter the stress? Okay, if you can alter the stress, you would have to do it. And how, you could, how would you totally avoid? But cutting yourself off, cut off your ties. If there is an aggressive person or a neighbor or a supervisor who's trying to you know, give you stress or who's being stressful to your, uh, towards your completion of job, then you would have to somehow avoid him. And I think we talked about how are the ways to avoid him. And lastly, you would have to accept it. Okay, in any event, you have to make sure that just how you delegate work, you do not delegate stress. Okay, um, I hope you understand by what I mean by delegating, you will not give stress to anybody else. Okay, so in any event, you will make sure that you're not giving the stress to everybody else. And there are some topics that we will build on it. All right, uh, we're gonna skip, but take a look at this video. Jim was up to his ears with work. Lily, Jim's co-worker, found him hiding in the break room feeling down in the dumps about his workload. Jim explained how anxious he was because he was drowning in work. Lily helped him understand that avoiding the stress wasn't going to solve anything. Lily offered suggestions to help him out. Lily showed Jim that if he tackled his to-do list one item at a time, that he could chip away at his workload and the burden wouldn't feel so heavy. Lily showed Jim how to prioritize his tasks and he began to make a dent in his workload and could feel the stress falling off of his shoulders. All right, so this is uh, the same way how we handled uh, the topics in time. CBT is something that you can think of here, how you would break it down. So if you, have, if you are sensitive to uh, a 15 minute rule or if that works for you, same way stress can be reduced towards, um, you know, by breaking it down into parts as you've seen it in the video. All right, the next topic is how you would be reducing uh, stress using your lifestyle. Uh, there's a Chinese proverb here which says, tension is who you think you should be, relaxation is who you are. So it's all about how well you can relax. And then what is the foundation of a healthy lifestyle? Stress reducing lifestyle is the foundation of, is the foundation uh, laid for reducing the stress. And then when we talk about positive low stress, there are just three building blocks. One is diet, sleep, and exercise. I don't have to say much about it, but I'm sure you all agree to it. But in reality, like I said, how the stress levels are um, lower, and so is you know the healthy lifestyle. And I cannot stress enough on the eating habits, the diet that we take, it's really, really you know, horrible as compared to uh, not just what we take, but the knowledge of having a healthy diet. You know, there are so many new uh, techniques of being on a diet, having a healthy diet, but then seldom used. And I have seen uh, you know, um, the foods that we have, the food preparations, you know, you know, totally you know, against the healthy lifestyle. So there is no way you can have your stress in control without these three blocks, starting with diet, sleep, and exercise. Okay, how would you eat properly? You know, this will help you in managing stress, you know, and setting your goals and celebrate your healthy style. Uh, in most cases, this is, uh, this is actually a challenge for, you know, the other cultures, for the other communities, okay? 
they always have to work on preparing their meals. In most cases, in our case, you know, it's for granted we don't have to worry much about, or at least spend more time, you know, cooking, okay, because it's all done. But then in, a, in the other world, uh, in a typical corporate world, there are organizations who try to promote healthy eating lifestyle because that's how they want their employees to be healthy. And that's how they want their you know, health coverage to be in control. And that's how they want the uh, absenteeism, okay, in their organization to be in control. And basically that's how they would have their productivity up. So many uh, top organizations provide uh, meals, okay, or provide um, very healthy uh, meals at a very good price. You know, the top, the big organization that I'm talking about, very uh, huge, um, well-established organizations have very excellent, you know, um, kitchens and dining areas, you know, that motivate their employees. First of all, this is a chain that they eat from the workplace. Secondly, they get to have healthy food. And thirdly, and most importantly, they don't have to worry about, you know, bringing in lunch or preparing meals, because this is a big hassle in most parts of the world, okay? Uh, once again, with our uh, community in the South Asian community, the Indian community, there's not much of a challenge. So this should actually work out to be better for you all because you don't have to worry much about spending time, you know, preparing meals, okay? Um, so there's uh, so many things to be discussed here, okay? And we'll take a look at how we can improve on our uh, lifestyle and focusing on food and sleep and exercise. Uh, benefits of exercising regularly, okay? I'm sure you all agree to it. Of course, your body will have to adopt to it. But exercising is the most important aspect, you know? The best way if you can't do anything else is to walk at least for 30 minutes every day, okay? If you can't go for a swim, you know, go to the gym, okay? So depending on your, um, on your body mass, depending on you know, how flexible you are. There are different exercises, okay? And it's very advisable to have a physical instructor, you know, consulted just, at least just for uh, having an idea what needs to be done, depending on your um, lifestyle and your uh, physical nature. Now remember, this is all personalized, okay? Stress is personalized, so is your body, and then so is your uh, relaxation technique. So it would, have, it would have to be professionally consulted, and then it would be better at least to have it once, whether you're going for a therapy, you're going for a relaxation technique, or you're just going for, um, you know, or whether you're just going for, you know, uh, mitigating, or whether you're just going to avoid the stress. Okay, the benefits, it makes you stronger, stress level is down, clears your mind, helps you think through. Now we need to have a clear mind in the, and remember clarity is connected to procrastination. So all of these things come in hand. You can yourself find, uh, you know, you can yourself find being more productive once you are back from um, um, a workout or from a, a long walk. Now, how does walk or exercise connect with sleep well or sleeping well? It does because you know sleep is once again a physiological pattern when you sleep there is a, a process that your brain is growing through just how you shut down your computer you know so that it processes it better or that you know it's you know in the sleep mode to be not working all the time not getting heated up same is the case with your brain how you would process so for that you have to sleep well okay if you are not sleeping well or if you're not sleeping enough then it's not um, it's not um, possible to be regenerated. It's not possible to be waking up fresh or it's not possible to be, you know, reprocess, you know, which your brain does. So these are the things that we have to see and these will make sense to have a good understanding of the connection, you know, just from, just how we had from time to stress, same way from exercise to your sleep. All right, some simple tips here on the screen. Use your bed just before sleeping. Comfortable place, same time each day. Have a routine before you go to bed. All right, these are uh, the tricks of the trade. These are very, very small tricks, but most important challenges that we have is our devices, the blue light that runs into our eyes. One thing I wanna tell you is if you look at your uh, screen, 
be it LED or LCD or how big or small and how bright or how low um, in brightness. If you look at it, rest is assured that you won't be able to sleep for the 30 minutes, for the next 30 minutes. So would you want to be wasting your time in the bed not going to, or not being able to sleep, okay? Although you have planned to sleep and you have a plan to get up early. So throw those blue lights or devices away, okay? If you can do it, that would be nice. There are some exercises we'll run into where we'll ask you if you can live without your smart device, smartphone for a day or half a day or at least for an hour. And one of my uh, housekeeping exercises when I begin a session is to have my attendees switch off their cell phone, okay? And some words like respect, confidentiality, confidence. So we don't need these distractions. So uh, the only tip I can give you other than what you see on the screen is to throw those phones away when you're going to sleep. He was asleep at his desk. Lori walked by and had to wake him up before their boss saw him. She told Pete he needed to get into gear. Pete had a monstrous deadline and had been skipping meals and sleep to beat the clock. Lori warned him that junk food and the lack of sleep would be the death of him. She reached in her snack drawer and pulled out healthy snacks and encouraged Pete to get up and walk around. Following her Pete was asleep at his desk. Lori walked by and had to wake him up before their boss saw him. She told Pete he needed to get into gear. Pete had a monstrous deadline and had been skipping meals and sleep to beat the clock. Lori warned him that junk food and the lack of sleep would be the death of him. She reached in her snack drawer and pulled out healthy snacks and encouraged Pete to get up and walk around. Following her advice, Pete felt more energetic and was inspired to get more exercise and eat healthier food. He also promised to sleep at home and not at his desk. All right, so if you don't sleep at home, then you will sleep at work. And I'm sure you may have seen people falling asleep or you yourself may have fallen asleep. So this is a big thing. Now sleep in itself, you know, is not just going to the bed. It needs to be processed the way, it needs to be real sleep, okay? There are cycles that the brain grows through. And for those people who are dreaming a lot, okay, that means that your quality of sleep is not good. You know, there are two types of sleep. One is the REM sleep and the non-REM sleep. So the non-REM sleep is what you need to do. For that, you need your body needs to be relaxed. Your body needs to be tired enough, okay? And you need to fall asleep. So I think we'll talk about uh, sleep in detail. However, but you have to know that if you don't want to fall asleep at work, then you have to make sure that you fall asleep in the night. And sleep is one thing that I cannot, you know, you know emphasize enough, nor appreciate enough the beauty of the sleep. Uh, this is a new field, okay? Just like how we have soft skills, there's a new profession among doc doctors, which is known as sleep doctors. Have you heard about it? Sleep doctors, okay? So there's a specialty where you only go there to have your sleep fixed, okay? And they go take you, you know, for a, a, a sleep study. They make you sleep in the lab for the entire day with all the attachments on your head and try to read on it. But that's that's happening these days. And these are very specialized, you know, um, areas, very specialist uh, hospitals. And if you have a sleep trouble, try to find a sleep doctor, okay? And see if you're suffering from a disease called sleep apnea, which is normal, okay? So there's nothing new about it. This has been there in half of us, you know, in half the population. However, it was not named, it was not diagnosed. All right, so let's move on out to alter our situation relating or getting into stress. All right, so what would you do is once again personal, but let's take a look at the building blocks of a stress, of a stress reducing lifestyle and how would we deal it? How would you alter the solution? You know, the best thing would be to alter the solution, you know, trial and error. If this doesn't work out, let's try that, okay? Set up a ritual. If it doesn't work out, you have nothing to lose. One of the rules of the ritual was not to have it set in stone, right? So let's alter the solution depending on how it will work out for us, okay? The first A is think positively, have a positive attitude, you know, improve your specific skills, doing something differently. So how would you think positively, okay? How would you think positively? You would have to come up with areas where you have to have alternatives to your positive thinking or to your, uh, to your uh, drawback. So this is how you would have to think positively. For example, if you were to take um, you know, a different route, 
okay? And this would probably reduce the stress, stress and you would have to look at the positive aspect of it, okay? The positive aspect of take, detouring the traffic that you meet every day for 90 minutes is, you know, is less stressful to you because it saves you the time. Or the positive aspects of not taking a, a shortcut but taking a highway is that you do, you're not tense, you know, of having to, you know, break or having to stop at the signal or having to be too close to other cars. So you just have to find out a positive. Our mind subconsciously does it. Our mind subconsciously will bring up these things in our mind and you just, you just have to stick to it. And you, you would improve your specific skills. Whatever leads to your you know, stressors is something that you would stop, okay? And then, you know, there's a saying, you know, if you do something, something may happen. So try to do things differently. These are normal day-to-day -day activities that we do. A normal person would have this inbuilt in him to, differ, to try different options, to try different things. So the best way to reduce stress is to be alternating things, doing things differently. Regardless of the stresses that you feel are taking over or the stress that was going up, try to always be changing. And we talked about variety. There's this saying, uh, in systems think variety kills variety. So when you have something that's going out of control, variety would be the best uh, solution. Identifying ap appropriate solutions. How would you do that? All right, you know, your specific situation relating to your own, um, uh, your own uh, environment, your corporate, settings okay would have to be taken into account and you you have to identify an appropriate situation that gives you uh, the stress it could be anything uh, relating to your uh, relating to a simple day-to-day -day, um, transaction like going to a dentist okay you're going to it it's very stressful most people think that going to a dentist is very stressful okay so somehow you have to make sure that you take control of the situation if you have to go, you would go. If you can defer it, you would. But there's only so much you can do. So how would you take control of the situation? You'd have, you just have to work it out by doing some research, finding out what alternatives are. If there is no alternative, you would have to speak with the personnel, whether it's your supervisor or whether it's your doctor, how you would do it. And then only when it's appropriate, you, know, you would try to you know, uh, work on it and you will try to adopt it and you will try to accept it. And the one condition that I... Uh, talked about in the earlier slides is you're not, you're not to delegate the stress to other person. Now, biggest stress observers, shock observers in our uh, lifestyle relating to us is our family, okay? You may not realize it, but the best, you know, stress observers or the shock observers are our family members. And then we always go to them and you have no idea how much of a stress level is reduced. Um, how much is reduced due to our, um, you know, family, it's a blessing. Now, what do people do who don't have families? Here, you may, not, uh, you may not imagine a person not having a family, but it's true. There are a lot of people in other uh, places, in other countries who don't have a family. Could be people like us who go and work, we don't have a family. So what would we do? We would, we would go to see a doctor, we would go to see a psychiatrist. So if there is a stressing, or a stressor that a person is going through, the first thing that would come to his mind is to go see a, a physician or go to see a psychiatrist. And that's the only person who he thinks can help. But going to a psychiatrist you know, is not taken as a healthy practice in our community. So we seldom do that, although it's, it would be advisable to do it. However, um, the purpose why I'm saying this is your stress is taken, observed by the people around you, your family. So same way, this is also to make sure that you don't delegate the stress. Because the, if the, your stress is, you know, uh, presented in such a manner that the person who's associated with you at work or at home may also be, you know, positive, you know, towards catching the stress. So this is you know, something like an ongoing, the ongoing crisis we are on, or not to scare anybody and not to give away, you know, the stress. So this is uh, how you would look at it. Once again, this was my perspective on how you would, you know,
try to find a suitable ground, you know, a middle ground to handle the stress. But worst case scenarios would lead you towards a high level and a nervous breakdown where you would need to have an absolute intervention by a doctor or the medication, okay? And then once again, this has a lot to do with your hormones, with your brain, with your subconscious mind, with your thinking, your addictions, okay? So we can talk about the addictions too in here, okay? Although I wouldn't um, you know, recommend it, but a small addiction like from caffeine all the way up to alcohol, it seems to relieve the stress temporarily. But on the flip side, the addiction goes up. The addiction to a good hormone is healthy, but the addiction to a bad thing is, you know, is very bad. So you, you know, you open up another can of worms that will improve your stress. So importance is also given to a long-term addiction, how you would keep the situation safe and not be addicted to wrong things to relieve your stress temporarily. Okay. And then uh, we're seeing the videos these days, how they're circulating relating to, you know, the addiction that people have. So there's a lot uh, to be said about uh, stress. Uh, we're a bit behind again, because, uh, you know, you know, you know, we've been uh, talking a lot. So the next slide talks about how to have an action. Okay, make sure that the benefit will be worth the effort. Okay, actions that are helpful, respect all people involved. Okay, it's a situation relating to a crisis if you're in stress. So you have to act what's in your best interest. Okay. And then taking a medication might be beneficial at this stage, okay? But definitely not being addicted to caffeine or alcohol, okay? So these are the benefits, risk versus rewards. So if you have a problem with your brain, you're taking a medication that will not be good in the long term, but it might work out and give you some relief in the long term. Now, these are extreme examples, but relating to your workplace, you know, stress levels, whatever you can do is what you would do. If you can avoid your supervisor for a day, do it. If you can avoid your neighbor for a month, do it. It's not going to help. If you can avoid your dentist for a few months till you get through the crisis, do it. Okay. But there is to be respect for all because everyone that's trying to help you with the stress is helping you. Uh, let's see what this summary is. Sally's neighbor in the next cubicle was a chatterbox. He interrupted Sally all day long. Sally had enough and lodged a complaint to her boss, John. He was no stranger to the constant hum of Sally's neighbor. John suggested that Sally should point the finger at herself and fix how she reacted to her neighbor. Sally decided to give it a shot and marched back to her cubicle, determined to turn the tables on her neighbor, and laid down the law and informed him that the noise disturbed her and that she would be happy to chat on lunch breaks, but not during work hours. The neighbor agreed, and they were allowed to work in peace. All right, this was a scenario where a chatterbox was... Uh, was uh, uh, conquering the scene. I hope you understand what a chat about a person who talks too much. So don't think that a person who talks too much, you know, cannot induce stress, can be very stressful. So make sure your environment is protected. Make sure you don't have anybody talking too loud. Okay. If you have a cubicle and the person right next to you is a loud voice, even on the phone, even for some time, that's a nuisance that is a stressor for you. So instead of going through all the way of our, you know, you know, altering or trying to adopt, you are better off trying to avoid him. Okay, this is a simple example, That's but that could be a major stressor. All right, avoiding the situation. Okay, that should be easy, you know, in our day-to-day -day life and in our uh, technological world that we live in, you cannot appreciate how you can appear or disappear. There are ways, okay? And then I'm not gonna say much about it, but there are ways of handling work from you know, workplace from home or from anywhere without having to tell where you are, okay? There were some nice jokes when uh, the video conference calls came in and I'm sure you're familiar with that, okay? So try to avoid the situation any possible way you can. The importance is not to be getting, um, you know, used to taking the stress, not to be able to handle it or not to be able to, you know, get over the stress. The best way would be to avoid it, okay? So let's see how we can avoid the, uh, 
the stressors, how we can avoid the situation leading to the stressors, and then have a, a, a grip on these stressors by avoiding them entirely. Okay. So in our AAA approach, the second one is avoid. You just have to identify stressors. You just have to identify stressors, remove them, you know, avoid them. Uh, I would, you know, would have been easier if uh, somebody could tell me uh, a stressor at home or at work that we could have, uh, that we could have uh, looked at. Okay. Now we talked about identifying stressors at work. You can see a chatterback, a person very loud, a colleague who's always bothering you to go out for lunch, or uh, your supervisor who also trains you, but who also gives you a lot of, you know, information not relating to your productivity, not relating to your goal, but talks about something else. Some people are used to just talking about their family, okay? Some people are only used to talking about their, their habits, like how fast they drive a car, okay? Or how good their boat is, you know, stuff like that. So you basically have to know that stress can take any form, okay? And stress or a stressor could be any, uh, activity or any entity. So it could be anybody, your guy, you know, your next door neighbor, your dentist, you know, your boss or your project. So somehow you try to remove them. We have some other techniques that we talked about from time management, how you would eliminate them, you know, and the best way would be to avoid it. If you can avoid a stressor, avoid it. How would you do it? So let's say you are a part of the email group, okay? It's very easy, exit the group. On a WhatsApp group, if it's stressing you, very easy, quit the group and don't even show. And the best part is you're not face to face, so you don't have to worry about, you know, getting, you know, cursed or slapped or, you know, uh, anything for the moment. And time is the best healer, as they call it. And you won't be seen for another, you know, who knows, months, days or years. All right. And do not avoid. <clears throat> okay, there are things that you do not adopt, avoid, and then you have to identify the situations, you know, uh, temporary reliefs will lead to a long-term, you know, uh, fall, a long-term fatigue, okay? So you have to make sure that the remedy that you have, if you are using the AAA approach, you have nothing to lose. But if you are close to a high level of stress towards a, a nervous breakdown, then you can be assured that this is going to come back, you know, provided you don't, you know, rectify it using the approach that we have, or you rectify it, you know, uh, you know, unconventional, non-conventionally, you know, you don't take the medication, but you just try to avoid doing things that may impact or improve your stress levels or may just build up a pressure on your brain. So how would you go conservatively is what you would look at. So the conservative approach has been the approach, has been the approach for a long time, or the all time approach in the past was the conservative approach. So what's the conservative approach is what you would look into and try to do it. Basically, you're trying to avoid anything, you know, relating to a therapy, anything relating to medication, anything relating to, you know, a breaking down, anything relating to taking it so much that you would break out, or that you would, uh, you know, that you would blow out in front of your uh, stressor or in your workplace. So there's a lot of, things that you have to have physically control, self-discipline, self-restraint, you know, emotional intelligence that we will be talking about when it comes to identifying these, you know, situations and keeping them in control. All right, transfer stress to another one. This is definitely to be avoided, okay? Health or safety impacted, definitely to avoid it. In any event, make sure that this stress is not going to have a long-term impact. All right, say no to uh, these things, creating effective actions. This is your uh, A, where you will follow up with an honest explanation. You will clarify no, you will clarify your reasoning, give an alternative, empathetically repeat the request, provide an assertive no. All right, so uh, this is relating to a situation where a person is giving you a stress or you have identified a stressor and then you are being a culprit or being you know, candid and trying to give in. So this is where you would have to come up you know, with an assertive no, okay? The positive no that we talked about is what you would have to do here. So 
uh, it's better to say a no on the face blank at the point range and then get away with stress. So this might be the most difficult task for you. It might be just like eating that frog, but you have to learn how to say a no, provided you know that this is a stressor. This is the task that is going to bring about, uh, you know, a stress, or this is the task that doesn't relate to my personal achievement. This is the task that will take away my time. This is the task that will tire me physically. This is the task that will require hours and hours of input from my side. So what are these things doing? They are tiring you, okay? They are boring. They are stressing your brain. They're bringing pressure to you. So with all these things, the stress is going to be up or the stress is going to take over. So like I said, it could take any form, okay? You just have to identify it and make effective action. Eddie already had a growing list of tasks to complete and Frank was piling on more work for Eddie to complete. Eddie had begun feeling worn down. As long as Eddie allowed Frank to pile on the chores, Eddie would continue feeling spent. Eddie, following the advice of his coworkers, decided to assert himself and hailed Frank over to witness the mountain of tasks that were taking over his office. Eddie told Frank that although he'd like to help, he had his own hill to climb and couldn't let Frank drag him down anymore. Frank saw that he had pushed Eddie too far and decided to tighten his own reins and get through his own work. All right, uh, there's a lot to be discussed about uh, health pertaining to your uh, individualized plan. And there are some exercises which uh, I wouldn't be able to show it to you. Uh, but you're more than welcome to view some of my exercises on the social media. Perhaps you can find one or two sessions that I did on stress on my Instagram page. You'll get it from my website. But anyway, I would like to talk a little bit more about it. But before I do that, I want you all to tell me at least one um, area where you think your health is being impacted and you are not able to handle it. So maybe that way we can uh, build on it because there's so much to be uh, relating to stress when it comes to your physical uh, being, your physical presence. So I think I'm gonna stop here for now and uh, be open for Q&A. Feel free to write whatever you have. I will try to answer it while others are talking or while the other panelists are uh, you know, presenting. And at the same time, um, uh, at the same time, uh, you can ask me uh, questions. If uh, voice uh, questions can come my way, it would be a lot faster. And, uh, but I also have access to the Q&A that I'm suing, that I'm looking at it. All right, uh, the other panelists, please uh, take over or uh, have the questions forwarded to me. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, um, Shahsaf. I would request, sure. uh, I would request uh, Ms. Homera to take over the session for Q&A. Hello, yes. Yeah, Omera, your voice is not uh, clear. Uh, hello? Uh, am I audible now? Not audible. Let me uh, ask you a question, uh, Mr. Shah. Yeah. I have a question from Neha Sheikh. How to overcome procrastination? How to? Overcome procrastination. Okay, that's a very important question. I think I have stressed enough on this. Um, well, procrastination is the task of de uh, delaying things. So I have said that you have to build on or start working on building the lifelong habit of, you know, taking up the most toughest task in front of you without having to spend much time. Okay. The best example that we used is the example of a frog. Okay. And you know, a frog is a frog. You don't want to go near it, but if your task is your frog, or if we are looking at your task as your frog, you have to learn how to eat the frog or how to eat your frog. This is the best way to look at it. Remember if your biggest task is your frog, then you have to really 
come in and the first thing in the morning, look at it and then eat it. Or it doesn't pay to keep wasting time having to know that you have to eat the frog. Now remember, in actuality, you're not eating the frog, but you just have to take care of the, uh, the, the tough task. So you have to build on to this lifelong habit of working on your task, you know, without uh, lo losing a moment and first thing in the morning. This is how you would procrastinate, you would avoid procrastinating. And it's very possible because everyone procrastinates, but he who is successful will never procrastinate. Okay, these are the traits of very successful people. I used to procrastinate, I still do, but I still know how to, you know, um, how to um, get over it. Now, there are some benefits of procrastination too, but I don't want to get into that, okay? But this is a wide topic and you can do as much reading as you want on procrastination, okay? But the first thing that you do is the most important thing and without having to think about it will help you. Next question. All right, I'm open for the next question. Uh, how do we understand uh, if the situation is appropriate when doing something? When? I, I didn't hear the last part. Uh, how to understand the situations is appropriate while doing something? Appropriate. Okay, this is a very general question. You have to be specific. Okay, uh, doing something relating to? That was not mentioned. So let me uh, quickly go okay, to move on, move uh, on to the second next one. one. Next question here. How the subconscious mind make stress and how do we send our stress to others? How not to send our stress to others? How do we send our stress to others? I think you have mentioned something in your topic. Okay. See, the first thing that you have to remember is you're not to delegate the stress. So you don't give your stress to other people. Okay. You have to be reasonable. We saw the slide. You have to be reasonable. You have to be honest. You have to be explaining. So you're not to scare anyone with your stuff, stress so that it catches on to them. Okay. Now, uh, the first part uh, of the question was, uh, what was the first part of the question? How the, sub how the subconscious mind makes stress? Well, the subconscious mind doesn't make sense, but it relieves the stress. See, there are two aspects to it. One is a physical and the other one is a psychological, okay? The physical one is physiological. In the brain, there is a chemical reaction going on and you don't have to worry about that, okay? That's normal, that happens. There's something that's released that gives you the taste of stress, okay? But you have now no control over it. But when you prepare yourself, when you avoid these situations and when you try to get a good night's sleep and when you try to create a ritual which will help you you know, gain, uh, be ahead in the productivity market, then your mind subconsciously is working on it even when you sleep, okay? So you would get up in the morning and have that in your mind and you will work on it right away. So for example, if you have set your uh, dress for the next day and subconsciously you know that, you know, it's there, I don't have to worry about it. So it does give you some extra space. So you get up and get dressed and you know that this is where I would be going and you know that your food is prepared and you know that this is what you will eat or drink and then be on your way. So you'll have some spaces that have been aligned, some linkages, okay, that are being cyclic. So this way you are reducing the stress, okay, by subconsciously your mind is working towards productivity. So you're saving time and the stress levels are reduced, okay. And then the other aspect is how stress is created in your brain. That's more of a physiological you know, issue this just this is just for information there's not much for you to do there okay it's just the way your brain works okay and then the doctors will take care of it if there's a problem next question okay uh this is uh, one of the question uh, like my brother is my boss and he is always giving stress in many terms always saying that you are a family member so you have to do it how can i overcome this okay well, it's good, and, it's good and bad to have your brother as your boss, okay? But let's take the positive aspect of it because you've been designed to take positive, okay? And then it's very easy to handle your brother, okay? It may not be very easy if he wasn't your brother, okay? So talk about the stress that he's giving, okay? And you have to be realistic and you have lots of time to explain it to him. And in our last few slides, we talked about how we can explain it honestly, how we can talk about it. 
But in any event, you are not to give him your stress, okay? In any event, you're not to bank on or use the relationship in your favor, okay? You have to start out that, look, I'm just talking about this because, you know, I have access to you. It doesn't mean that I'm seeking, you know, favors because you're my brother. But talk to him, be a realistic, and try not to give him the stress. He will buy it. Next question. Uh, what are the positive stress buster activities one can do? What are the positive? Stress buster activities one can do. Well, eat good food. Okay, by good food, I really mean good food, okay? You have to get rid of potatoes. You have to get rid of rice. You have to get rid of meat. And only live on veggies for a month and see. Okay, it might be tough. Sleep well at least for seven and a half hours or eight hours. Okay, and exercise at least for 30 minutes every day. That should do uh, it. Next question. Uh, I have one question for uh, Saeed Bhai that a uh, person is asking. He, he could not find any uh, stress management thing in on LMS. Yeah, for that, you know, the stress management model will be available. Okay, only when uh, the stress management portion is complete by Mr. Shah. So mostly, you know, it will be available tomorrow, along with the assessment. Okay, thank you. And uh, I'm unable to access LMS properly, not getting assessment link. Uh, well, so, okay. yeah, this is one question I've uh, been seeing, you know, in the chat box this morning. So basically, there is not a separate link for assessment. So once you log in and go to the course, so on the left-hand side, yesterday as I showed you, you would see certain course components. You first have to finish off the e-learning module, and then beneath that, you would see you know, the assessment link. So just click on that assessment link. And also, I would like to add something here that you know, people are expecting an email every day. So that's not going to happen you would get an email only when you enroll into the course for the first time. Okay, so every day you have to log in and you will find, you know, new course components out there. So tomorrow, inshallah, we'll, you know, add the stress management module. Uh, what we can also do here, uh, Saeed is because we raised a poll wherein uh, who's finding it difficult for LMS. There have been more than 100 participants who have already voted for it. There are two people two types of people who have not received the link. So I'll be getting that data on my uh, Zoom. I'll share it with you. you just check those email IDs who have voted for cannot receive the link. And you can check from LMS if why has it happened. Well, alternatively, if they have logged in for the first time today, you know, then they would not be receiving an email because yesterday and the day before yesterday, whoever have attended, they have already gotten their emails. Okay, and then they've already logged in as well. Uh, so today who have logged in, so they would not be able to get the emails. So in the chat box, you know, I've uh, given the uh, enrollment link. So people can directly, you know, sign up from there. Okay, thank you. So uh, Shasab, I've got one last question here. Yeah. So far. Uh, how yes. can we manage stress? Well, uh, that's what we talked about. Uh, it depends on your stress. First of all, you have to sleep well, eight hours, okay? and then exercise at least 30 minutes and eat well, okay? And try to change your diet. You know, from what I can see, most of us eat the wrong stuff. So uh, if you really think that you need, you need to get over with it this weekend or uh, this uh, time or this Ramadan, you know, the best tip that I can give you is get rid of all the rice, you know, and get rid of all the fried items that you have. And don't even look at meat if possible, okay? Or maybe a very small portion, but definitely rice and bread and just load up with vegetables and no fried food and no sugary stuff, no cool drinks, no sugary stuff and a bit of caffeine and so you'll feel the difference. The whole process of Ramadan is being defeated by the you know, um, type of diet that we have. So this was a question. I've answered most of the questions on the chat, but these all relate to the uh, you know, same thing. So the key is exercise, walk, and then after hours, after you break your fast, and then sleep, okay, and sleep in the night, not during the day, as much as you can. And lastly, you know, eat the right stuff. That's the essence. Next question. Okay. Uh, there are no further questions. Uh, Saeed Bhai, do you want to talk for a couple of minutes before we end the session for the day? Yeah, well, I think on the LMS side of it, I see that today, you know, we have reached around 110 enrollments, okay, and those who have not registered, 
uh, you know, please log in and then get registered, sign up, and then you will get access to the time management module. And tomorrow we will enable the stress management module as well. So that would include, you know, certain, uh, you know, reading material. Plus there would be an assessment as well. So you can take that assessment. And uh, at the end of all these fourteen sessions, the system would consider, you know, the average of assessment, and then the certificate shall be issued. So one criteria what people have been asking about is how do we get the certificate? So that would be at the end of the you know, skill program. Thank you. Uh, Shah Sab, there is one question just came from somebody. How yeah. to manage stress on financial crisis in the family? Uh, I think I just answered it. A financial crisis is very easily handled. I mean, it's nothing usual. Uh, but I can understand, you know, the masses, uh, especially in India, where uh, financial crisis is, you know, a crisis uh, in addition to the other crises that we have. But if, you know, it's, it's very easily handled. It's uh, nothing, you know, impossible. But what you have to remember is you also have your stress levels in control, you know, to handle the financial crisis. So the key is the same, you know, uh, first of all, you have to stay healthy, exercise regular and then uh, to keep your stress. Then with the financial crisis, you have to work on, you know, some financial crisis. Uh, but I don't want to talk about those here, but perhaps if I have some time, I will connect with you, uh, you know, um, separately, because I have financial strategies too that I can discuss. I'm also a coach on the financial side, but right now it's uh, beyond the scope of this uh, topic, this lecture. But I have given you a little bit on how to maintain your stress levels to handle the financial uh, stressors. Okay. But we'll connect uh, with you or we'll talk with you or you can get back to me, um, you know, uh, privately uh, via email. Next question. Uh, there are a few questions that I saw in chat box as well and in q and as well that uh, we have missed the first lecture or we have missed first or second lecture. How do we get through it? So just want to uh, confirm to all the participants who are here that uh, we would be uploading our ses all the sessions by the end of the day today. So tomorrow we'll be sharing a link with uh, everyone who has been registered with uh, for the soft skill webinars. So you will be able to access all the sessions right from the day one. And as, as the sessions will keep on going, we'll keep uploading them the next day. So you'll be able to get all the access to it. And uh, how, uh, Shasta, how to manage negative thinking during the period which creates stress? Well, say that again. Uh, how to manage negative thinking, negative thoughts during the period which creates stress? Okay, I was writing that. You have to control your mind and the thought process. Keep your mind busy chanting, reciting verses or anything that uh, goes well. So you just have to work hard on keeping your mind you know, a repeat or, you know, you shouldn't give a thought or a second to the mind where, you know, it will uh, divert. So you just have to keep yourself busy, you know, either reading, watching or reciting or chanting or whatever you can. Uh, I'll take another two questions and then we'll end for the day. So uh, how yeah. to control overthinking? How to control overthinking? Yeah. Okay, see, this is a, a, a case, this, this is a module on neurosciences, uh, okay, and I have information on that, but this is, uh, you know, uh, more of neurology as opposed to psychology, okay, and with stress, we're only talking about human psychology, how we can handle that, and then uh, negative thinking is, uh, you know, it's very easy, it's nothing big about it, but it's beyond the scope of this, you just have to keep yourself busy, control your thought process, should not have anything on your mind. And to do that, you have to keep your mind busy by reading, okay, or exercising or walking or sleeping or reciting, you know, so that the other thought will not intervene. It's like you should not allow your brain to share other things. Okay. Uh, family is said to be a stress observer. How to manage if the family is a source of stress? Uh, no, you would have to create a positive situation and you have to uh, somehow maintain it. But, you know, it's a, it's a long topic. It's, these are social or societal uh, stressors, okay? And these are very easily handled than other uh, stressors. So, you know, it's, you know, it would have to be a detailed case-by-case case, uh, scenario. 
if it's possible, a psychiatrist would help you in this. Okay. I can also, you know, try, but it's beyond the scope. And there's nothing wrong in having some intervention, having a physician or a psychiatrist or a family member take over. Because remember, the best stressors are relieved by family members. Okay. So family is not a source to stress, but it is an observer. It is, you know, absorbing the stress. So you have to rely on the family and get some additional family members in to understand the situation and how you have to handle it amicably in a friendly manner. Uh, in either way, either uh, needless to say that you shouldn't be giving uh, the stress to others or it shouldn't improve, increase on your stress level as opposed to decreasing. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's just one last question. Uh, I'm very, I was very good at start level of the project till it get established, but afterwards feel lack of confidence. Sometimes I feel exhausted my exhausted my energy for starting a project. What should I do? Okay. Well, there's a topic task initiation. Okay. And then there's a topic where you can uh, initiate a, uh, a task even when you are in a boredom or when, even when you have fatigue. So this has something to do with procrastination from what I see. But if you have initiated the task and you have uh, gotten bored, then there are different ways of analyzing it. You know, there is one technique called rich picture. You would have the project on a piece of paper, a big paper, draw it, visualize it, emotionalize it, and try to bring in different factors. And that will create the, the spontaneity or the fun that you need. And uh, uh, it, it would have to be done in detail. You know, I can't uh, talk about, but the only thing I can tell you is it has a lot to do with your time management skills with your stress management skills. And it's very, very possible. Okay. There is no way you can give up in the middle of a project. You have to make sure that you deliver it, even though, you know, it may sound like a frog, but you have to make sure that you deliver it and you have it uh, uh, delivered on time. So chances are you might be spending too much time reviewing or too much time concerned about not being able to deliver right. It's same as, you know, uh, aiming and aiming and not shooting. So somehow you have to finish it and deliver it. So I see procrastination as the biggest, uh, you know, uh, concern here. Next okay, one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I see that Shen Shabai is here. Do you want to uh, talk something about uh, Shen Shabai before we end for the day? Yep. I think we are good, uh, Shahzad Bhai. Uh, thank you, uh, oh. Shahz, for wonderful sessions. And inshallah, we'll continue tomorrow. Okay, thank you so oh, much, thank uh, you. Shen one, Thank you so much, Mr. Shah. Yeah. Uh, one suggestion would be if we can... Uh, uh, give the list of topics which will be covered every day uh, date wise then maybe for the audience it will be good and they will be aware which one what going to be covered tomorrow day after yeah uh, okay sure. you're asking me um, we're going to be finishing stress management tomorrow and then we'll move on to emotional intelligence either tomorrow or next week well we yes. should be able to finish stress tomorrow okay. great okay Thank you so much, Mr. Shah and uh, Mr. Saeed, for your valuable time today. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow with a new topic and all rejuvenated with our next, for our next session, inshallah. All the participants, it was fantastic to have you all on board. Keep coming for these live sessions. And I'm sure that with every session, everyone is taking some good things, good thoughts with them. And thank you for being part of AMP Employability and Soft Skill Program. We will, inshallah, see you all tomorrow again. Uh, also ask your friends and family members to join these sessions and benefit uh, by improving their skills to face the corporate call out there. Thank you so much. We'll be ending the session for today. This is Shaza signing off. Thanks. Thank you. Bye now.